and I would like to get one that's called multiple combo boxes. Notice how it has a file extension of XLSM. That means it's going to be a macro. So I'll pick on open. In this case, we have a couple pull downs. And if I click on this first pull down, it has a list of the states. I'll pick on New Jersey. Then if I pick on the second pull down, it has a list of the cities from New Jersey. If I pick on the first pull down, I'll pick on uh, Pennsylvania. Now the second one has the cities for Pennsylvania. All right, so let me show you how I did all of this. This is gonna be a few steps. Okay, first of all, I have all this data in here. So I have a list of the states. I have a list of the cities for New Jersey, a list of the cities for New York, uh, a list of the cities for Pennsylvania, and a list of the cities for Delaware. Now, those things do not have to be on this sheet. I can put those off to the side somewhere, or I can put those in a different sheet. You just want that, that available somewhere, the list of the information. So let's say this is gonna be the list that'll feed um, the first pull down, and then these, will feed uh, the second pull down. So, you know, you have a list of all this data. Like I said, you could put that off to the side somewhere or even on a different sheet. Now to make those, uh, these are called combo boxes. To make the combo boxes, we have to go into your developer menu. So I'll pick on developer and I'll pick on insert. All right, these are all called controls. Uh, now this one is gonna be an active X control. The active X controls are going to be able to be more robust and they can actually run the visual basic code directly. So um, I'm going to use this one right over here and I'm going to move it over here. Now, just by doing that, that's not enough. We have to tell it how to make it work. So to initially make it work, I'll pick on properties. Then you get this other window. Now there's lots of properties here. Some of them have to do with the appearance and some of them have to make it really make it work. So I'll pick on um, alphabetic to put in an alphabetical order. There's really only two properties that I'm worried about here. You see where it says linked cell? You have to click there and I'll type in um, A10. You would type in a cell reference. That means what cell is going to be adjusted when I pick on the, uh, the combo box. Now you see where it says list fill range right there. I have to type that in as well. So I'll type in A1 colon A4, which is the list of the states. So the really important properties for the combo box are the linked cell. I typed in A10. And then the list fill range, I have A1 through A4. I'm going to close that window with the red X up there. Now, you have to take yourself out of design mode to make these work. You can tell you're in design mode because that icon right there says design, it's, it's in a different color. I'm gonna click that. Now that new pull down should work. So if I click in the pull down, there's the list of items, right? That was the list fill range from A1 to A4. I'll pick one of those. And then see how it filled in cell A10. That was the fill, that was the, the linked cell. When I click in the pull down, <clears throat> excuse me, it gets the information from the list fill range. When I pick one of those, it fills in that, that linked cell over there, as we can see. Let's try that again for one with the cities. So I'll pick on developer, I'll pick on insert, and I'll use this one over here, the combo box is in the ActiveX category. I'm gonna click that, and I'll, pick, I'll click right over here. Good. Now remember, you have to go into the properties to make it work. So I'll pick on properties, for the link cell this time, I'll type in um, E10, right, E10. And for the list fill range, I'll use C1 colon C3, which in this case is the list of cities for, the, uh, for New Jersey. For my link cell, I have E10. For the list fill range, I have C1 through C3. I'm gonna close that window. Now remember with these kind, you have to leave design mode. So I'll pick on design mode and I'm gonna click on the pull down and now it has the list of cities from New Jersey. When I pick on that, the, the link cell fills in. But this time, if I pick on New York, the second one still has the cities for New Jersey. So right now they're not dynamic like this one up here is. Notice I just picked the New York over there and now this one has the cities for New York. 
Now, let me show you how we're going to make those dynamic. All right, so you can use the insert menu and use the, these controls. And then that kind of makes them work. <coughs> but to make them dynamic, like these two over here, if I pick on Pennsylvania, now we'll have the cities for Pennsylvania. Then we're going to go into that code. To go into the code, we have to go into design mode. So I'll pick on design mode again. You can tell you're in design mode because that icon just changed to a different color. Now, I'm going to show you the code that's behind these items over here. Uh, I'm going to pick on this item, this first combo box. And notice how it has the name of combo box one in the, um, in the name box. And this one is called combo box two. This one is called combo box three. And this one is called combo box four. By the way, if you wanted to give them a different name, let me at least show you that. I'm going to pick on this one over here and I'll pick on properties again. And then that property uh, is called the name right up top there. And I'll call that one um, new, uh, let's call that uh, states. States uh, combo box. All right, so I call that one states combo box. I'm gonna close that window. And you can see it has that name of states combo box. I'm going to click on this one. I'm still in design mode, right? I'll pick on properties and I'll call that one city combo box. Good. So you can see on the name box, it says city combo box and this one says state combo box. Now this one is called combo box one and this is called combo box two. Now, so I made those two combo boxes the same exact way I made these two. Then, um, from there, I right-clicked on this first one. Then, you can go ahead and pick on a View Code, and that's going to open up the Visual Basic Coding window. So, like I said, the ActiveX controls, when you right-clicked on them, you'll be able to go right into the code directly. And now, this is the Visual Basic Programming Code once again. Uh, so, it says Private Sub... Uh, combo box one change. So in other words, when the when the combo box changes, this will run automatically. This is called an event. Um, so if I come over here, I can click on the pull down, and then you would see different events. We can make something happen if they click on that combo box or if they double click on it. If there's an error, all right. So you you can do something for all of these different events. In this case, if that combo box changes, then this code will run. So I'm going to delete this code for a second. I want to show you something. When you, when you go into any of these other ones, if I right click on that and pick on view code, there's not going to be anything there. All right. So you have to know what to type into here. When, it, when you first go in there, there's nothing there. Now you can find many examples on the internet or there's books you can buy about this topic. So I'm going to right click on this other one and I'll pick on view code. Now I'm going to paste that code back in there. So you, you don't have to type, you don't have to watch me type. So in this case, um, I'm setting a value combo box two. remember how combo box two is the second one over on the right. I'm going to set it to, to a space at first. So I'm just going to put it to a space. We're going to say if combo box one, if the first one equals uh, New Jersey, then the second one, the list fill range will go to C1 to C3. So that's where we had the cities for New Jersey. If combo box one equals New York, then combo box two, the list fill range will get its information from column D. If combo box one equals Pennsylvania, then combo box two will get its information from column E. And if combo... If combo box one equals Delaware, then combo box two will get its information from column F. Notice how I have four end if statements because I have four if statements. They always have to match out. One, two, three, four if statements. That's why I need four end if statements. They always have to match out. Notice down here it says sub and then here's a sub up here. So even this one has a sub and an end sub. So that's all part of the structure. Now, if I want to recreate this code, I'm just going to copy it. 
and paste it right into the one for the states combo box. All right. Now we're just going to make some changes here. So I'm going to highlight this information and we'll do a classic find and replace. Uh, so I'll pick and replace and then uh, if it says combo box two, I want to replace that with city combo box. And I'm just going to replace them all within that section of code. Exactly. Now, if it says combo box one, I want to replace that with the state combo box. Remember how we call those a different name. And I'll replace those within that section of code. Good. My point here is maybe you'll find some code on the internet. Um, you can find many, many examples on the internet. If you go up to Google and type in VBA code examples or something like that, and then you would mod you would copy and paste that and then maybe make the changes uh, so it'll work for your situation. This code should now actually run. So I'm going to close this window. Now to make everything work again, we have to leave design mode. So I'll pick in the word design mode. Now we know the first one works. So I'll pick on Delaware and over here, it'll have the cities for Delaware. Let's see if the second one works that we just made. So I'll pick on PA and notice how the second one has, well, something didn't work right there, right? So I have to go back and look at the code. It still has the cities for New Jersey. So let's see what happened with that. Sometimes the code doesn't work the first time, right? So now we're going to see how we would debug the code. We're going to go back into the developer mode and I'll pick on design mode. Good. I'm going to pick on this item. Now, even up here, I can pick on view code. All right, let's see what I did there. Oh, I, I know what's going to be the wrong thing, but I'm uh, we're going to step through it. Now, I'm going to click to the right of that line right there, and the line just turned red. That's called a breakpoint. So that means it's going to stop on that line when it gets there. I just set the breakpoint. I'm going to close that window. Now we're going to uh, leave design mode, and we'll try it again. Let's pick on P Pennsylvania. See how it stopped on that breakpoint. Now I'm going to show you how to debug your code a little bit. So I can step through the program one line at a time by picking on your debu debug menu and then you say step into. Notice how it also has a keyboard shortcut of F8. So on my keyboard, I'll do F8 and it went to the next line. The line that's in yellow is the line that's about to run. That line hasn't run yet, but that's the line that's about to run. Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move my mouse to where it says state combo box and it says state combo box is empty. You see, I call the, uh, the actual combo box states combo box. So that's why it says that it's empty because I misspelled it in the actual code. So that's why the if statement isn't going to catch anything. Watch. I'm going to hit F8 and it went to the next line. So it's not New Jersey. State combo box is not New York. It's skipping all of these, you see. I'm hitting the F8 and that's why the yellow line is moving. So it, it didn't run any of this because state combo box is actually empty. So after looking at my code for a while, Maybe I'll notice that it really has to be states combo box. I'll change those very quickly. Good. Now let's try it again. I'm going to close that window with the red X and we'll start again. If you get this message, that means it's just going to stop the program and then you can restart it. So I'll pick an OK. OK, so um, I just picked Delaware. Now we're going to st there's the breakpoint again. Another way you can step through it is by picking on debug and then I'll pick on step into. Remember how the line that's in yellow has not run yet. So now if I move my mouse, it'll tell me that state combo box has the value of DE, right? So that spelling was the issue there. So let's follow the code. 
I'm going to hit F8, and that's why the yellow line is going to move. So it's not New Jersey. It's not New York. It's not Pennsylvania. We know that it is Delaware. So now the city combo box will get updated, and now it's going to work. So a couple things about this. To set your breakpoints, I can click on this gray column next to the line that you want to uh, break it at. You can have as many as you wanted to, so it'll break at those spots. Um, now, to go to the next break line, instead of going one at a line at a time, you can pick on Run and then pick on Continue. That'll go to the next break line or to, to the end of the program, whatever it hits first. If I want to take the breakpoints away, I'm just going to click on that same uh, this, the circle and that'll remove it. 